Good evening, everyone. Welcome to How Happening and our Turo Vega project. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Um, this has become sort of our holiday party. Before I make, I announce our special guests, and I want to let you all know that in the alley is a jukebox, all weather jukebox. And as a holiday gift from us to you, we have stocked it with friends of the gallery's music. So when you're out there taking a smoke break, just press the button and you'll hear a song. It will bring you carols, buddies, good fortune, and bounty. It's a little riddle, you can sure you can figure it out. Uh, so we're here tonight to celebrate the 20th anniversary of Please Kill Me, which has new chapters and a new essay in the back. So without further ado, I would like to introduce Lake McNeil, Jillian McCain. Christmas cheer, and in the best way we know how to do it, is by selecting someone from that we know is going to be in the audience. Um, and tonight we get to humiliate <laughs> and make no. But tonight, I, I knew my good friend Bob Bruin, the famous photographer, was here, and we, we had a we were having lunch today, Jillian and I, and uh, I said, let's do Bob Bruin. Bob's coming. So we, uh, we're going to do them. <laughs> do some of them. Do some of them. Testing. Testing. Wait, you said you want to do I'll set it up. Yeah. This is at the end of the very famous Sex Pistols tour. Um, which uh, ended in San Francisco, and a lot of us guys were there. Holmstrom and Roberta had gone on the entire, John Holmstrom, the editor of Punk, and Roberta Bailey, the uh, Punk magazine staff photographer, were on the entire tour. I was in um, Santa Monica with the Ramones, you know, and Holmstrom called me and told me that I had to go on the tour, and so that's where we're going to start. And this chapter, 34. 34. Anarchy in the USA. <laughs> Legs McNeil. When Holmstrom called me from the road and told me to be in San Francisco for the last show of the tour, I had no interest in going. But John told me it was my job, that I was resident punk and had to show up and it would be good for the story he was writing. Also, Tom Burkott, who was the publisher of High Times, was making a movie and he'd given us a lot of money and I owed it to Tom and to, and to him to show up. So I picked up the receptionist from Playboy magazine and we drove to San Francisco. Bob Bruin. After the Winterland show, all the fans were cheering. Sid came back out, looked down at the audience and picked out four pretty girls near the front. He grabbed them by the hand and said, come with me. <laughs> Bill Graham was standing there, shocked. I mean, lots of band members come out and talk to a girl or two, and maybe pull a chick, but they never actually physically pull four of them up and say, come with me. <laughs> I didn't see Johnny with a girl until that last night. He left the last show with some girl who was backstage. It was kind of a surprise, because from the first minute I met him, Johnny never seemed to like any <laughs> He just seemed to be in a really bad mood from day one. You know, everything sucked. He was so cynical and so sarcastic about everything that he would always point out the derogatory aspect of everything. That's why I was so surprised when I saw him leave the Winterland gig with a girl on his arm and half a smile on his face. It was the most human thing I ever saw because it was something so out of character to see him enjoy a moment of life. <laughs> the pistols sucked at Winter Day. The show was awful, but it didn't seem to matter. Everybody was just thrilled to be there in the presence of the sex pistols. After the show, Holmstrom handed me a backstage pass and said, Go talk to Sid. You'll like him. He's just like you. <laughs> I thought, fuck you. 
Sid's a fucking moron. You know, thanks a lot. I went backstage and Bob Bruin was there and he got me a beer and introduced me to the band. Every one of them looked miserable. Sid sat in a chair with his shirt off. Johnny was alone on the couch muttering to himself. Steve and Paul were lounging next to a plastic garbage pail filled with Heinekens. They were just sitting around griping to one another. What was funny was that Sid had pulled four chicks from the audience and the four girls were just standing around. Everyone was ignoring them. And then Sid turned to them and said, So, who's going to fuck me tonight? <laughs> Don't we even get a kiss first when the girl asked? <laughs> she wasn't kidding. <laughs> Just then, Andy Levy was the Rolling Stone photographer, and assistant carrying flash boxes and cables and white umbrellas came barging in. She braided through the dressing room and began setting up all the equipment in the bathroom at the end. She said, oh, excuse me, Johnny, could you um, get in here um, with a, a shot with Sid? Fuck him, Johnny said. Why should I have to go to that bastard? Tell the wanker to come over here. Uh, Sid, do you think... Uh, you can join Johnny on the couch so I can get the shot with the two of you. Fuck off! <laughs> okay then, Johnny. Can you get in, in the bathroom alone? Piss off! But it's for the cover of Rolling Stone magazine, Lee Wood said. Well then, is my hair alright? <laughs> Johnny shrieked as he folded his greasy matted hair so that it formed two little horns. It was pretty funny, but overall the whole scene was pretty depressing. The Sex Pistols didn't seem to be having any fun at all. So I loaded up my jacket with Heinekens and split. I didn't know it at the time, but, but that was the last few moments of the Sex Pistols' existence. That was one of the last few minutes, moments of them as a band together. I came out of the dressing room, and Demita just happened to be walking by wearing her mom's t-shirt. She was eight months pregnant and had a hole cut in the t-shirt so that her bulging stomach popped through. I peeled off my backstage pass and slapped it onto Vita's pregnant belly and said, go for it, Vita. She said, wow, a backstage pass, cool. Then she waddled away to the dressing room. Bob's room. I woke up the next morning and there was Tamita, eight months pregnant, sleeping in the bathtub. I said to myself, what the fuck am I doing in San Francisco? <laughs> I hadn't been home in 10 days, I hadn't changed my clothes in 10 days, and because there was so much competition, I was under a lot of pressure to get back to New York and develop my film. So I made one of my favorite phone calls and said, what time is the next flight to New York? <laughs> When I was leaving the room, I saw Joe Stevens, a photographer in the hallway. He said, the band is planning to go to Brazil. They're going to record and do some filming down there with Ronald Biggs, the great train robber. You want to come with us? I looked at him and I said, Brazil? What, are you kidding? Who's going to pay for that? He said, well, I'm going to get my newspaper to pay for the airfare. I thought, you lucky bastard. <laughs> I said, I'd love to go to Brazil, but no one's paying for it for me, so I'm not putting another 2,000 bucks into this. So I went to the airport and took the first flight out. When I got back to New York, it was snowing. It snowed for two days. I stayed in the house and worked in the dark room day and night during the entire blizzard. I felt pressured because tons of magazines were going to be doing big features on the Sex Pistols. I finally took a break in the middle of one of those nights and went over to CBGB's. I walked in, and Johnny Ross was there. He had flown in from San Francisco. He said, did you hear the news? I said, what news? He showed me his t-shirt and said, I survived the Sex Pistols tour. <laughs> Johnny had written on his shirt that the band had. <laughs> I said, well, what does that mean? He said, what do you think? This is it. We broke up. I said, what do you mean you broke up? I just invested two weeks and a lot of money into these pictures. <laughs> he said, that's it. Malcolm and the rest of the guys went off to Brazil and I'm here. We're not doing it anymore. They were the biggest band in the world and they just broke up. Everything just seemed to be the opposite with that band all of the time. Thank you. Uh, 
Well, we'd like to introduce a special friend of your mind coming up and joining us. Bob Bruin is here. We have Bob in the house. It's all true. <laughs> we, we, we had kind of a, a, a great year this year. Um, we put out the 20th anniversary edition. I had some problems with that. We did a, a great tour of the Ace Hotels across America. And it, it was really fun. It really was fun. Uh, um, we did a two-hour radio show that's going to be uh, loaded up to our new website soon. Um, in the next month or so. Um, it, it was a, we did it with Michael DeBar, I don't know if you know Michael DeBar, he was in, uh, I don't know, I know, to serve a love of Silverhead. 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 I, I always forget the fucking Silverhead. <laughs> <laughs> the name of the band, you know. But, so we did that, and uh, it, it aired on about, um, Station. Yeah, 300 oh, national wow. public radio stations. And it was um, uh, public radio, so we didn't have to pay for this song. Yeah. <laughs> Which is the reason we could do it. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. But uh, someone, a very, very special friend, Tom Hearns. Yeah. Could he come up, please? Yeah, Tom, Tom, where are you? Oh, he's going to hide. Oh, come, come on. Come on, fuck face. <laughs> where is he? Where is he? Oh, Tom. Tommy. Yeah. These are his photos. Tommy is a kid that has been friends with Leonard since he was five. Tommy and I have been friends since 1962. Not really friends. Just do your goofy smile. I want you to do your Tommy just sold a bunch of these. Um, photos to the Yale Archive, the Benneke Library, um, and uh, we, we were both up there yesterday and the day before meeting this great guy from the library. Tim Young. Tim Young. So the thing about Tom was he never considered himself a photographer. Yeah. Maybe until now. Yeah. I mean, all the... I think it's fucking great. You know? <laughs> Anyway, um, so we did that, and what else did we do this year? We did this. Oh, yeah, 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 we did a lot of these, yeah. So, so Merry Christmas. Yeah. Thanks for coming Yeah. We're going to hang out. I know we call it an early night because it's almost the holidays. Everybody's got a lot of shit to do, you know? And we just wanted to say, hey, thank you guys so much for supporting this book for 20 years. Yeah, thank you.